Hi, my name is uh, Dan Payton and I'm with Easy Homes LLC and we're here today to uh, give you the steps on how to uh, winter successfully winterize a manufactured home. So obviously the very first step is to turn off the water and the water shut off for most homes is going to be in a, in a pretty general location but we're going to show you where this one is. Uh, others will be in other places, but generally they're going to be under the home and we're going to show you right now where the shutoff is for this particular home. So in this home we're going to be reaching under and turning off the main water shutoff. Make sure to turn it off all the way so that no water is coming through at all. So the next step is to locate the hot water tank and then now we're going to shut off the gas or if it's an electric hot water tank we need to shut off the power to that hot water tank before we start to drain it. Some hot water systems obviously are, are electric and so those need to be turned off at the circuit breaker box. So you'll come to the circuit breaker panel, find the shut off for that hot water tank and turn it off. This is a gas hot water tank, so we're going to be turning off the gas on it as we just did. That shuts the flow of natural gas to the hot water tank. The next thing we're going to do is hook up a, a garden hose to the drain spigot on the hot water tank. So before we actually open the drain valve we want to make sure the hose is securely connected and that the hose is running out the, the uh, out of the home so we drain the water out outside of the home and not in the home the other step is that we want to open up the pressure relief valve which allows air into the system that'll help the home or the, the hot water tank drain quicker Once we uh, start draining the hot water tank, the next thing we want to do is go throughout the home and open up all the faucets, which again allows more air into the system and allows everything to drain quicker. The next step is to actually hook the air compressor up to the plumbing system, and we do that at the washer hookup. The first thing we have to do though is turn off the, the shut, close the valves to the, to the uh, washer uh, hookups and make sure they're nice and tight so there's no leaks and then and now we remove the hoses uh, from the washer hookup uh, faucets sometimes you'll need a pair of channel locks or a good set of pliers to remove those hoses from the from the faucets they can be on there very tight Now that we've disconnected the washer from the, the faucets, now we're going to hook up the, an air compressor. We're using a 150 PSI air compressor, and we've configured a special fitting uh, to hook up to the, to the faucet. This fitting, we, we uh, got the parts that you're, just like uh, any local hardware will have these parts, and it's designed just to go onto a standard faucet fitting. The first faucet I we like to hook up to is the hot side. So we hook that up to the to the hot side faucet. The next step is to turn on the air compressor and as soon as you turn on the air compressor we're going to open the valve to the hot water side. And that will start pushing air through the system and you'll see water coming out of the faucets at your sinks and toilets. After we've uh, pushed air out through the hot side, now we're going to switch the air compressor over to the cold side. We're going to make sure we shut off the hot water valve to the washer though before we uh, turn the air back on. 
Now we've finished the hot water side, now we've moved the air compressor over to the cold side and we're going to turn the, hot, or the, the air compressor on and push that water out the cold water side of the system. So now that we've pushed all the water out of the plumbing system, the next step is to come back to the hot water tank and make sure that valve is closed to the drain and then remove the hose. Alright, so the final step, obviously, we, now we have to put antifreeze into all the traps throughout the house. The, the traps under the sinks, the traps in the, in the toilets tubs, etc. And we're going to show you how to do that. So basically it's very simple. We're just going to pour some antifreeze, maybe a cup or two, into the sink, just enough to fill the trap. And that'll keep that water in the trap from freezing. All right, the next step is we're going to go to a toilet. And the first thing we do is we take the RV antifreeze, we pour some into the toilet tank itself. And while we're pouring it into the tank, we're also pouring some RV antifreeze into this tube. And that allows RV antifreeze to go down through the, the, the plumbing of the toilet itself. The next step is we actually flush the toilet. And again, that allows more RV antifreeze to go through the plumbing of the toilet. There's two approaches to uh, doing toilets. One is the bucket approach. I fill the bucket with about a gallon, a gallon and a half, to two, two gallons of antifreeze, and then we're going to dump it into the toilet bowl, and that, that force pushes antifreeze down through the, the trap of the toilet. And here we go with the bucket approach to pushing RV antifreeze down through the toilet bowl itself. So we're going to do the second toilet, uh, starting in the same way, we're going to pour some RV antifreeze into the tank itself and into that plumbing tube, and that forces antifreeze down through the, the plumbing of the toilet. Now we're going to use a, a technique where we actually take the gallon of antifreeze and we push it down into the toilet bowl itself and, and put pressure and squeeze squeeze as hard as we can and that pushes RV antifreeze down through the trap of the toilet. It's very effective and you use a lot less antifreeze that way. So that completes the winterization of this uh, mobile home. I uh, hope it helps and if you have any questions about how to do it or any of the little secrets or tricks, uh, by all means give us a call at Easy Homes.